I was playing it cool because I had had some people around the first two years and I didn't get the call. Sure. So I said, forget that. I was okay. out working in the yard and doing stuff and the call came. So I took some a different- Some therapeutic gardening maybe? Yeah, and a little change of uh, strategy. Yeah. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Rippin' Packs. We are here with Ryan Sandberg. Ryan, are you ready to rip open some baseball cards? Always ready, always ready. Let's see what we got here. You're a Topps guy. I mean, you have uh, signed for Topps forever. I have, and I've, I've stayed aboard, and uh, and it's been a good relationship, but you know, it just takes me back to my early seasons. Well, it takes me way back, really, to a kid, but then really uh, got attached to Topps uh, with my 83 card coming out, oh, and yeah. couldn't wait. and. Uh, I, uh, throughout my career, I always knew when the uh, photographers would be at the ballpark, I got to know them so well of that course. they'd come up and say, hey, we're here today, we're shooting. So I was always anxious to see what they got. Yeah. And uh, oftentimes, believe it or not, in spring training, when I'd see the new cards come out, I remembered the swing, I remember turning the double play that they got that was on a card. So, you can so recognize cool. the so photo cool. in the play. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it really, I mean, cards themselves are just such a cool way to capture the game and the history of the game. So, I mean, it's right in a photo. It immortalizes a moment. And you know what? It's lasting forever. I have yeah. grandkids now that are starting to collect the cards. Uh, oh, yeah. So um, they have a good collection of some of my rookie cards, and, and but they also like some of the new guys, of course. Of course, that is awesome. Well, we're gonna hunt for some more of your rookie cards. We actually have a pack of 1983. It still has the gum in here. Got a I little can dust feel on it. there, a little dust <laughs> a on little there dust. the gum. We'll, they we'll, we'll yeah. dust it off we'll for you. We'll try the gum, all right? See what we're... That <laughs> I, was really my main thing as a kid growing up, like any of the kid, uh, guys of my era. It was to get, it was to buy a pack like that for whatever we spent back then yep. in the uh, mid 60s. Mm -hmm. Rip them open real quick, see what we got, throw them away and chew the gum and ride off on the bicycle. I, I mean, that was kind of the routine, it was more for, a little bit more for the gum, but of course. looking I, back, if I right. only would have kept half of those cards. No kidding. I think <laughs> probably the gum lasted as long as the pack rip actually did. And probably, <laughs> yeah. yeah, probably a couple blocks down the street it went out, but. Uh, oh man. But it's such a big. Uh, Big business today, and it, it's so cool. It's 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 almost, it's it's everlasting, like yep. the game of baseball. It really is. All right, we're gonna do it. 1983. Let's, let's do it. 1983 with Ryan Sandberg. Let's see who you've got inside. I'll take the the wrapper from you so we can get the gum out here. <laughs> There's the gum. There we go. We got Greg Lazinski with the White Sox. There uh, we go. I was actually a, a teammate of him when he was with the Phillies. Uh, I was a September call-up mm -hmm. 1981, and he was the left fielder. They just won the World Series. Here's Mike Eastler, Pittsburgh Pirates. I played the, actually with in Venezuela with him as we were working up the ranks. No kidding. He was up and down with the Pirates, and I was uh, just finished my AAA season. Right. So we were teammates uh, with uh, in Venezuela with the Maracaibo team. How about those caps, too? The caps the, and the uniforms, the, the, the Pittsburgh the uniforms back in the day were, were some of the best. Very sweet. Yeah. Uh, Glenn Hoffman, Got the Red Boston Sox Red here. Sox, solid player. Here's Jeff Jones, Oakland A's. I love on these cards too, specifically in the 83, you've got the action shot and then you have the inset of the actual, you know, headshot with it too. Which is cool. And But also when you just look at these cards, I mean, they just, I mean, they just scream vintage photograph, you <laughs> oh, know, the yeah. technology. <laughs> There's no gloss to it whatsoever. There's hey, nothing. There's no. There's no uh, gold on there. No. <laughs> nothing flashy. Terry Franconi, Kona, a buddy of mine. Uh, he came over for the Cubs uh, for a year or two. Played with him. Yeah. This is. It's just your good old baseball card, 1983. Yes, I actually saw Terry Francona when he was with the Expos. He was like a hit machine. Mm -hmm. I saw him hit each of the bags in one game. He hit the first base bag, a double down the line. Mm -hmm. He hit the third base bag for a double down that line and actually hit the bag on a ground ball up the middle. I was going to backhand, he hit the second base and got three hits, hit all three bags. That's unbelievable. In one game, yeah. unheard of. <laughs> unheard of. Here's Rick Cerrone, Yankees. Now remember back in the day, there was an interleague play, so I didn't mm -hmm. play against a lot of the American League players except sure. for the All-Star game. Right. 
So uh, not a lot of history with some of these guys other than All-Star games. What, uh, what was it like, you know, that first time you were announced as an All-Star? What was that feeling like knowing that you were going to play in the All-Star game? Uh, it was actually the uh, 1984 game in yep. San Francisco, and I was going there representing the Chicago Cubs. We were in first place at the time. Uh, that was my MVP year, and uh, the Cubs uh, really took off on WGN-TV with Harry Carey, Steve Stone broadcasting the game across the country. And uh, like I say, we're in first place. So I went there to represent the whole team and what we were doing that year. It was, it was, a, it was a big deal, not only for myself that year as an all-star, but for the whole Cubs organization. So and the, it was and the ideal. city, I mean, the yeah. entire city. It, it, yeah, it took off. You couldn't get a, a seat at Wrigley Field anymore and you still can't. And that all started <laughs> in 84. There you go. Here's Enos Cabell. First baseman, Astros. Jack Morris. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Tiger here. Awesome right hander. A lot of postseason play. So that stash Hall of Famer. too. I mean that. Old is... the stash, yeah. <laughs> Classic Tigers uniform. Oh, here we got a little bonus thing. A win a World Series trip. I wonder if that's still you good. <laughs> is that still good or I mean it looks it's a scratch off. Oh it, man. It's a scratch. <laughs> I wonder if you if that's still uh you know, is that still legit or it's, what? It's I mean. crazy to think about the promotions that Topps has had throughout <laughs> the years. Like you could win a trip to the World Series just by opening up a pack of cards. That's awesome. Randy Johnson, not oh. the pitcher, not the pitcher, the hitter. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Mike Marshall, Los Angeles Dodgers first baseman. Uh, he was a kind of a nemesis in my career, him and Steve Sachs. Look at him just loaded uh, They up were tough. Too. Yeah, he, he was shot. a big guy. He, Kind of a really big guy for that for that era, you know. Now got now guys are all big. He was he was big at that time and a power hitter. Ted Simmons just went in the Hall wow. of Fame last year. It's a nice card, that Hall of Famer, new card. Hall of Famer, as of last year. Beautiful card, that dual photo on there too. That one actually has a little gloss to it. <laughs> yeah, Very it kind of nice. does in the light. Head of its time. <laughs> Probably because it's been in the pack for so many <laughs> years that it hasn't seen the light of day. <laughs> Here's Bobby Gritch, fellow awesome. second baseman. There we go. An all-star card, all too. Card. He's got the, yep. the all-star designation on there. All right, cool. So we are actually celebrating the 35th anniversary of our 1987 design this year. Now, 1987 is iconic for collectors. It's this wood grain design, and it was really innovative for 87. And one thing that Topps does really well is just honor our past and our history. So I thought we would rip open some 87. Let's do it. We'll see what we got in here. Feels like some more gum, but you do the honors. 1987. 1987, first thing that comes to mind for me personally, mm -hmm. uh, Andre Dawson joined the Cubs with a blank check and uh, he signed the check for $500,000 and ended up winning the MVP that year, yep. which I witnessed firsthand an incredible year hitting that he had 49 home runs. Now, how would you describe him, you know, off the field? Off the field, uh, just, he, was like a, he was like a gentle giant. He was a monster on the field and just the nicest guy um, and a fellow Hall of Famer sure. as we speak. Um, great guy, work ethic, class, uh, top to bottom, on yep. and off the field. Oh. <laughs> spring, fe spring fever baseball. You get to win something here. There so, we go. Uh, We've got all the promotions in there we go. In 1980s tops. All right, let's see who we've got in, in 87. Davey Johnson, manager of the Mets. It's a little nemesis of mine as we battled the Mets back in the day, in the, in the 80s, mid-80s. Yeah. He was oh, yeah. the skipper. Back when they used to make the manager cards, too. Also a former second baseman. Uh, hit 40-plus home runs with the Atlanta Braves. Mm -hmm. uh, Whitey Herzog. Battle against him wow. within the own division, our own division. How neat St. Is that? Louis Cardinals, Coming out Hall of, of Fame manager. Very wow. cool. So here's the wood design. The wood design you're talking about. Yeah, is the, exactly uh, that wood grain. I mean, it has just become so iconic for tops and collectors um, that we're bringing it back in our 2022 um, Series One and, and Two collection. We are paying, you know, homage to the '87 design. So it's just uh, very cool. It's really neat to see these <laughs> as '87. Here's Bob yeah. Boone. At the time, he was with the uh, California Angels. Mm -hmm. He was on the Phillies uh, when I was there in the minor leagues, and uh, another former teammate of my, mine as I was there, a September call-up for the sure. one month. Here's Mike Diaz, former teammate of mine. Here he is um, 
after he left uh, the Cubs and went to the Pirates. Power hitting uh, backup catcher. The, the belts too. <laughs> I mean, well, the unis, well, they're the just like Yeah, those are the elastic, but no belts, just the elastic with the shoestring. Around, around which, the waistband. Which, which we had as well. Yeah, <laughs> very cool. A lot of the jerseys had just the V-neck, no button down, right. you had to pull them over. Right. Carl Best, Seattle Mariners. There's the V-neck, pull over <laughs> yeah. top. Also that uh, that Mariners logo too. <laughs> very cool, yeah, the star. Oh yeah. Yep. Scott Fletcher. Played with him. He was with the Cubs, then he went on to Texas. Mm -hmm. He became a pretty good uh, shortstop, had a nice little career there. Here we go. Scott Fletcher's in our pack. Here's another manager, Sparky Anderson. That's cool. I saw him go into the uh, Hall of Fame. Yeah. What was it like, you know, when, when you got the call? Were you surrounded by friends and family that day? Uh, no, I was, I was playing it cool because I had had some people around the first two years I didn't get the call sure. so I said forget that I was okay. out working in the yard and doing stuff and the call came so I took some a different therapeutic gardening maybe yeah and a little change of uh, strategy yeah. there so I went into my third year uh, which was very cool mm -hmm. and um, as my agent told me um, you're in pretty good class there because uh, Joe DiMaggio went into his third year so there you go uh, not all bad third time's a charm I guess yes. right here's Ed Lynch Cool. Former teammate of mine. And then actually my last two years in uniform, mm -hmm. 96 and 97, he was the GM of the Cubs and he was the one that signed me back. Uh, I, I left for one year and then came back to play. They took, I prematurely uh, retired and came yeah. back and he was the GM. What was that conversation like? Was he like, Brian, you gotta come back? Uh, a little bit of that and I got that from the teammates. Uh, they came up a, just short, a couple of games short of going to the playoffs okay. in 95, I believe it was. So I actually came back and played 96 and 97. 96 came back and I, I think I, I think 26 home runs and drove in 92. First year back, I think I was 36, 37 at the time. There you go. Turn back the clock. Reggie Jackson. Oh yeah, look at this. We love these turn back the clock cards. Mr. October, very cool. We uh, we still do these today, but uh, the card within a card, I suppose. Very nice, classic. And here's the bonus card, the Ryan Sandberg card <laughs> at Shea Stadium. <laughs> we got him. And it, it looks like I'm slightly fooled on a pitch. It might've been a breaking ball from Doc Gooden and I, I was looking fastball, but as you can see, I put still put the bat on the ball. That hopefully, is amazing. Hopefully with a base hit the right field right there. Yes, you definitely took that one the other way. Um, took it the other well, way. 1987, Ryan Sandberg. That is amazing. I mean, this was 35 years ago, Ryan. That's luck that, of the draw right that there. That is amazing. I, I see that card a lot. Very, very cool. Oh, yeah, the 87 Action one is iconic. Shot, yep. and, and we got it right here. That is very cool. And I'm going to say that's against, against uh, Doc Gooden because he was tough. Yeah throwing uh, nearly 100 miles an hour and a tremendous curveball. Also like to pitch inside underneath the chin a little bit, which so you, you didn't know what was coming. So just so, just so you know who, who was boss when you, yeah, when you got in the there play. it is. Very nice. Was he uh, was he like the toughest pitcher you faced, do you think? Uh, probably Nolan Ryan, Nolan Ryan. who threw 100 plus yeah. <laughs> with a uh, equally nasty breaking ball yeah. to go with it. Juan Berenguer. Faced him down in Venezuela in winter ball. Mm -hmm. Hard throwing right-hander. Yep. So we we had a monster pack. I We're going to ask if you would sign oh, sure. <laughs> your rookie card. I'm sorry, not your rookie card. We're going to ask if you would sign Absolutely. your 87. Yes. We'll uh, move the gum out of the way for you. And uh, man, that is so cool to see come out of our pack. So isn't it just such a good feeling ripping open packs? There we go. Well, you just never know what you're going to find like that. I mean, who would have thought? So wow. what are we talking? How many years ago was that? 35, 35 years? 35 years ago. 35 years ago. It's been in there and there it was. Signed and ready to go. We love it. That is amazing. <laughs> Ryan, thank you so much for hanging right. out with All us right. for Open thank Packs. You. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be back with much more at youtube.com slash topstudios.